Um, the trust that I run is, uh, has a Quaker history, we're nearly 100 years old, um, and uh, uh, if you know anything about Quaker history, um, the, the trust has always been driven by Quaker values. We're, we don't call ourselves a Quaker trust anymore, and we're not all Quakers, although some are and some aren't. Um, so we have always had um, an ethical approach to our traditional in, uh, investment portfolio. Um, we have always screened out, negatively screened out, uh, damaging um, stocks, and in fact, even uh, to the point of uh, not investing in uh, government bonds of, uh, of governments which uh, invest heavily in, in the military, so we can't even invest in UK government bonds. As a foundation, we are um, we're, uh, engaged specifically in structural change and in advocacy. Uh, we see ourselves quite unashamedly as a social justice foundation working in criminal justice, economic justice, gender justice and racial justice. Uh, and, and we're quite small, so everything that we do has to be catalytic. So everything that we do, uh, whether it's a, a, large, a large amount of money or a small amount of money or a large amount of time or the, or the use of any of our resources, has to catalyse some other uh, social justice change. Um, our portfolio, our endowment at the moment stands uh, around 75 million uh, UK uh, sterling, which is obviously relatively small. Um, our, I came into post in 2009 bringing with me um, experience from the social investment movement and I was pushing on a very open door saying uh, we, should, we should be moving into social investment. Um, but our, and our board has agreed up to 5% of our endowment to be invested in a revolving fund in, in various types of social investment. Um, but no prizes for working out that 5% of not very much is not very much at all. Uh, and so our motive uh, in doing this is not to be the social investment market, but to help develop and catalyze it for the mainstream. So our, our end game, if you like, is to see uh, the larger institutional investors uh, and pension funds and so forth investing in, uh, in social markets. Um, we see this as a way of using some of our funding um, in, a, in a revolving way. Uh, obviously, if you give a grant for something, uh, whether it's successful or, or not, none of the money comes back. Uh, whereas, obviously, with social investment, uh, there's every prospect uh, in, in, in some parts of that, uh, that that you will get not just your money back, but some other, uh, some, some other dividend. One of the things that we're involved in doing, and it, it's part of the flexibility that we can have as a foundation, um, which a lot of other uh, institutions can't, um, we're involved in um, helping, we've given grant funding for feasibility and we're giving grant funding for the evaluation, but we've put an investment of equity into the development of a platform, it's called FX, for the trading of social, in, uh, of, of, of social enterprise. So, um, in, in other words, we are helping with grant finance as well as some equity to try and develop a, some platforms for, uh, the, to, to create a secondary market. Um, and I'll just tell you one other nice example of something that we're investing in, uh, which, is, which is a bond, which we, we've made an equity investment in, uh, in, a, um, in a project in Bristol in the west of England, um, which buys up houses and then uh, offers um, uh, young offenders or people at risk of offending and or other young, young people uh, not in education, employment or training, uh, gives them apprenticeships to learn how to do up the houses, then sells them on to profit and then the idea is that that will become a revolving fund. Um, so I suppose the caveat or my final wor word would be uh, of advice for anyone wanting to go into this is, um, is that there's only any value in doing it if the social impact is better than we could have achieved by other means. That's our sort of acid test. Um, but it is a way of recycling money in a, 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 a over and again in hard times. Uh, as we all know, uh, and as you said, uh, resources to finance the welfare system uh, have been uh, cut down by governments due to the financial crisis. And uh, with reference to Italy, we can say that uh, many social services that were run by non-for-profit organizations but also uh, by local authorities have been reduced and uh, so uh, what's happening is that 
uh, non-for-profit organization and also local authorities are knocking at foundation doors uh, asking for support. Obviously, foundations are not the, able to support and replace uh, financial uh, resource, resources that are uh, provided by, were provided before by the central state and by local authorities. So uh, the risk is that the welfare system, as we have known it uh, so far, uh, risk to collapse. And so we think that there is obviously, obviously a, a need uh, for uh, cooperation among all the um, players, private and public, profit and non-profit, of the local uh, territories in order to find a solution to uh, social needs that are uncovered by uh, public authorities. Uh, in order to do that, there is, a, however, a strong need of cooperation among those uh, uh, bodies uh, of uh, uh, our communities. And uh, things that were done in the past individually must be done uh, in a cooperative and coordinated way. Uh, we think that in this perspective, foundations I'm specifically, uh, specifically referring, of course, to Foundation of Banking Origin, but not only to them, um, uh, could play a very strategic role, uh, not just for the resources, financial resources they have, but uh, mainly for three um, other different reasons. First of all, because um, due to their close relationship with their communities, uh, foundations are able to pick up their needs, to uh, understand their requirements, and to identify uh, priorities. We could define them like uh, fillers uh, of their territories uh, in constant dialogue with uh, uh, in relationship with all the other players of, uh, uh, of the communities. Uh, secondly, because foundations uh, are catalyst institutions meaning that uh, they are able to rally uh, other players to pursue a common goal. This is possible due to their neutrality and their authority uh, that legitimate them to uh, play this role of coordination. And finally, because uh, they have a specific attitude to innovation that is strategic when uh, it's necessary to uh, find new perspectives to uh, solve uh, issues and uh, uh, problems that uh, arise in, in, in uh, local communities. The, the second project example is uh, uh, a project called Un Cuore Stazione, meaning an art in a railway station. It's a public and private partnership uh, aimed at improving uh, lives of mar marginalized people uh, living in and around uh, railway stations. Um, uh, providing uh, services, uh, dwellings, uh, and uh, counseling to those people who are in uh, uh, usually homeless or in a temporary difficult situation. Uh, Ferrovia dello Stato, in fact, provides buildings and spaces uh, in railway stations where uh, the services can be provided. And El Cuore renovates uh, and adapts the facilities uh, to the needs of the services to be uh, carried out. IKEA or other companies in, uh, um, like IKEA provides furniture and equipments in the renovated facilities. Uh, local administration select third sector organization to assign uh, the services through public tenders. Third sector organization run the services and foundation can fund initiatives also identifying and uh, supporting the analysis of the needs that are uh, requested. So, so there again we see a complementarity of each different actor coming from each sector, bringing what they know best. Their that, competencies and resources, yes. And their specific resources exactly. giving their background. Yes. Okay. And uh, there, are, um, there are already 10 projects in uh, 10 uh, different uh, railway stations, the, the most important railway station in Italy already uh, functioning and uh, the, 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 the results are very uh, significant. Have you seen a change because you, you were enticing through the way you were doing your grant making, public private cooperation? Have you seen a, a change of mindset? Uh, or is it def right? definitely it's more complicated, of course, because you have to put together two different approaches more practical, the approach of foundations, and more 
bureaucratic, let's say, the, the, the approach of uh, local authorities. But I think that uh, there is a common interest in working together because, not, not just because of the lack of resources, but also because uh, there is a, a mutual trust between the two uh, uh, players and uh, the results uh, are uh, a proof that working together there it's possible to pursue uh, more efficiency and uh, more effectiveness. We have never been as close to the statute, but we are still far away. I hope I don't have to convince anyone in this room about the use of the statute, but I want to try to show you how practical the statute will be uh, once it will be unanimously uh, accepted. I will do that with my four hats. Um, the first one is as an employee of the King Baudouin Foundation. You all know the King Baudouin Foundation. You know we have activities in Belgium and Europe. We are giving grants. We have donors in different countries. So we have several reasons to hope for uh, a European Foundation statute, but I, go, I will go into the details of one. We had the chance to receive a legacy from a French resident donor. So there is a double tax treaty between Belgium and France that says that if you are considered likewise a foundation in the other country, you can benefit from the same inheritance taxes, which is very interesting for Belgian foundations because French foundations are exempted from inheritance taxes. So the good news about this situation was that in France they speak French. The bad news was that we had to go through all the administration of the, of, of, to, 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 to show that the King Baudouin Foundation was equivalent to a, to a French foundation. This took us two years. Um, we had, fortunately, not to translate our bylaws and so on and so on because we had them already in French. And we had to hire uh, a lawyer office to help us to go through the different corridors of the administrations. Two years. Should we have had a European Foundation statute, that would have been much easier, I guess. Second thing of the working at the King Baudouin Foundation is that the, there was a decision taken by our board to say that we, staff, stakeholders, direction, are not working anymore in uh, a Belgian foundation in Europe, but in a European foundation in Belgium. And that has changed our view, that has changed all the projects we did approach. We had a very, uh, uh, on the symbolic way, we had a more European approach, and that could be one of the side effects of a European foundation statute. As my second hat is a philanthropy advisor. Uh, that's my day-to-day -day job. I'm giving advice to families, corporations, and uh, individuals on how to engage in, in uh, philanthropy. If I look to the two last weeks, I did meet, I did have five cases where a European foundation would have been the right tool. And I will, I, will, I will go into them because it's important. There is, the first one was an American food chain. It's more uh, an American breakfast chain that wants, that had the idea to create a European foundation. So they called me, they said, is that possible? I said, well, in the near future, let's hope. And then I had to explain that it was not so easy than that, that the good idea was good, but it was not yet possible and that they first had to choose to create a national foundation and then an optional stages and so on and so on. So I did have the impression, and what is very important for them, that is that they have European, their name and foundation in the, war, in the name of their future tool. Uh, I hope this won't be a missed opportunity. Um, because of the complexity, the actual complexity. I was contacted and will meet very soon a lady that uh, wants to extend successful activities and projects um, and methodology to other European countries. And she didn't know how to do that, how to do it. Important, she has already distributed 15 million in the last five, 15 million euros in the last five years in the country where she operates now. So 
uh, you see that for her also a European Foundation statute would have been the best way to move forward. I was contacted by a European-wide uh, collaboration, scientific collaboration against breast cancer uh, with activities and donors all around Europe. You can, they have uh, an, uh, an office, a registered seat in Brussels and their office is in London, so for them as well, the European, they are very keen to hear when the European Foundation Statute will be possible. I was contacted by a famous football player, an old uh, world champion that has its foundation in the country he last played, it's an ex-football player. In, uh, he has his foundation in the country where he last played and he, do, he, do, he does want now to uh, transfer his seat from that country to the country where he lives. And apparently uh, he has some huge difficulties to do that, so his case will be also interested to be highlighted very soon to show the importance of the statute. Um, a last one. Um, a very important Scandinavian philanthropist, having already several foundations, wants to start, uh, together with French friends, wants to create a garden of love. Which, and I see some of you smiling, no, no, it's absolutely general interest. Um, it's, it will be a very nice initiative where you have museums from all Europe that will bring pieces together dealing with love, showing love, and so on and so on. So they also wanted to know when the European Foundation Statute would be ready, because they will have activities, expositions, exhibitions, and donors all uh, around Europe, and especially in their garden. And I could go on. Uh, I was contacted by ISEC, the, the Economic Student Association, wanting to help students in economics having dif financial difficulties. They wanted also to create a European foundation. Uh, a, a famous European TV channel wanted to start something, uh, a US-based agriculture think tank, and so on and so on. And last but not least, the European Foundation for Innovation and Technology that was created by the European Commission itself. Who better than them will be uh, a European foundation? Without the statute, some of these initiatives will never start or in a less effective way. And I think we don't live in times where we can afford such missed opportunities.